were you creative uh, as uh, before any of this uh, uh, that you joined PayPal um, as, as a little boy? Uh, were you curious? Yeah, I guess um, uh, a lot of it was um, playing around with, I think, a, you know, maybe the, the story to tell is when we start interviewing candidates for people coming into YouTube, one of the things that we ask is sort of outside of um, sort of pure GPA and looking at the uh, sort of academic history, there's a, there's a big part which generally in the resume about sort of activities or things that, uh, projects that they worked on outside of school. And I think that some of the, um, the best engineers that we brought on, some of the best, um, the best people on the staff, it wasn't so much the, the, their academic history that, that's, you know, um, that was illustrious. It was the stuff that they accomplished outside of it. And, and to me, the reason why that's more important is because it really shows that you know, it's, not just, it's not just sort of a, a job that they have to do of going to school and then getting great, great scores, but it's, it's actually something that, that really they're passionate about. And I thought that was a big thing for me at the cost of you know, some of the, uh, the classes I didn't like so much uh, with uh, receiving poor grades in those, but at the same time, um, I, I think I'd learned probably the most out of the time that was spent outside of a classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was there a eureka moment? Uh, Newton said when he invented the calculus that uh, he felt he was standing on the shoulder of giants. Uh, for you, was there a eureka moment when you said, ah, this is the way to do it? Mm -hmm. Or was that a gradual process? Um, I, I guess it happened pretty on. You know, uh, we started the site back in. We started working on the site in January of 2005. Um, we launched the site in like a, a sort of a public beta of the site in May of 2005. And um, if you look back at the history of the the growth curve, it was always a sharp ascent. But a sharp ascent doesn't doesn't mean much when you're sort of doubling from you know 10 users a week to 20 users a week. And we didn't really know what we were on to until I would say about November, December of 2005. Um, and a few things all happened at once. There was a there were uh, a few videos, two videos that I remember being big on the site at the time. There was the um, there was a Saturday Night Live video that was uploaded, as well as a Ronaldinho soccer video by uh, by Nike that was uploaded to the site. And the Nike video was uh, was particularly striking because it was uploaded by Nike, but it was uploaded under a sort of a pseudo name of I think it was uh, of very common name of Joe B. And they wanted to to, to sort of create this. The, the video was Ronaldinho basically juggling, juggling a soccer ball off of a, a goal post, but it had it was very shaky. It didn't seem like um, it definitely didn't seem like it was a professionally produced video. And I think that was one one area where you know um, where we thought that Nike really got it. That you know this is this is about trying to create something that's user generated that can be felt by the community and users and the viewers. That it's not something that it's a uh, a large corporation just feeding advertising down, but actually trying to, to be one of the users and trying to, to become um, one of the, you know, it really seemed like it was just a, an avid fan that was taking a video of Ronaldinho as he was practicing. But these two videos were, were the, I think the hallmarks of when we were starting in 2005 that we thought this, this was really a phenomenon, you know, because before 2005, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine back then, but just videos were not possible to be viewed on, on a, and browsers. If you see most of the uh, the videos back in early 2005, they either required you to download an application, or or if you were on a, a Macintosh, videos wouldn't work. If you're on Windows, it would sometimes ask you to. Even today, there are a lot of sites out there that it's very difficult to watch videos, and it's sort of a 50/50 coin toss whether or not the video is going to start after you click on it. And I think that uh, with with YouTube, what we did in 2005 was really try to define uh, that this is actually a a, a viable market that people will watch videos using a browser um, instead of, it's, it's really transforming sort of the, uh, the computer and the desktop and the laptop into a place that you can get entertainment other than just you know, emails and, and, uh, and, and other the traditional uses through the internet. Absolutely, I think it's really transforming the way we, uh, we view entertainment and will transform more and more as the years go by. Uh, it's phenomenal what you have done, Steve. And uh, our third guest is uh, Mark, um, who was born in January of 1999. I mean, that seems like yesterday. <laughs> I, uh, I met Mark uh, in New York um, at uh, a friend's house, uh, my friend Shirley Young, um, who uh, always has extremely interesting people uh, whenever 
you go to her house. I don't. She <laughs> she's a, a, a great uh, uh, a great great hostess. And uh, when I w walked into the apartment, I heard the most beautiful music coming from another room, and uh, it was so moving. I had to see who was playing. And uh, when I walked in there, I was so surprised to see little Mark Yu at the piano, playing with such emotion, the Chopin Nocturne, that uh, so beautifully, I have never heard it so beautifully played before. And uh, it, it, it really moved me. Um, and so I, I, uh, I became a fan. <laughs> and I became his groupie, really. <laughs> I would go anywhere to, uh, to uh, listen to, to Mark play. And, uh, his, his mom uh, told me that uh, uh, she would always loved, uh, loved uh, music, and she always played, when, when she was pregnant with Mark, she played uh, a lot of classical music. And then when Mark was about uh, one and a half years old, one day, all of a sudden, she heard him humming. And uh, to her amazement, she was humming some Beethoven symphony. <laughs> and uh, so they... Uh, uh, went to a party, and there there was a, um, a little child playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. And Mark was two years old at the time. And when he came home, he played Mary Had a Little Lamb, faultlessly, on the piano, even though he has never had a piano lesson before. And when I heard that, it reminded me so much of little Mozart, because uh, Mozart was, uh, had a sister who used to have piano lessons. But Mozart was too little. He was two, I think. Uh, and, uh, or, or maybe maybe Mozart was three years old. I think he was even a, a year older than Mark was. But anyway, uh, after the, 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 the sister played the piano, Mozart uh, said, I want to try. And his father said, no, you're too young. And he says, no. And he played the same tune that the sister had played. And so the, they are very similar in the sense that uh, uh, it is definitely um, th you know, th this is natural. I think uh, no matter how hard I practice, even um, <laughs> if I practice uh, 12 hours a day for the next 20 years, no way can I play like Mark. <laughs> so Mark, uh, uh, would you like to play for us uh, t today? Please, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 